Max, I'm so excited. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have a bunch of guys. Max, again, always, please, just have her whisper, please. I'm go- it's not good for your voice, though. Whispering? Mm-hmm. I think it's not good for you. You think or you know? I feel like, don't they say that when you have a cold or something and your throat is bad, is you're not supposed to whisper? I have no idea. I don't I've know. never heard that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I anyway. wonder. Uh, <laughs> check the statistics. How many ASMR people do you have issues with their throat? How many people get turned by turned on by whispers? That's a good question. Yeah, Google it. Max mm? Maximus West. Yes. So I I never told you why I started this, right? Or did I tell you a little bit? No. So I I literally was here and I'm like, hey, I want to do a podcast. And then yeah. there, are, uh, I wanted to make this for creative people, like like. Anyone who's a creative, anybody who's a photographer, who's a videographer, editor, director. Even though we're all we're going to talk about is ASMR. <laughs> Probably. It's going to be a whole <laughs> podcast about ASMR and then 10 minutes of like <laughs> creativity. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so pretty much like we've been doing this for a long time. Like a very, very, very long time. And there are some times where I feel like people who are behind the cameras don't get as much recognition. Maybe they don't get as much appreciation for the work that they do because it's so hard. And mm-hmm. I don't think it's on purpose. I just think that people don't realize how much work goes into a picture or it's, a video. It's very hard to because you see pictures or videos and what you see is the person in the picture or the video. Right. And I think too, I'm, I never got much recognition for my work until now where I actually do both. But now when I model, I get more recognition for my photography as well. Really? So it's helped you actually, your, oh, yeah. it's helped the back end of the 100%. career. 100%. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. well, how, okay. What, what gear? What gear do you use? What's your go-to camera for photo and video? Oh, uh, Nikon. Always, okay. I've had Nikon since I. W- I think it was like eight or something when I got my first Nikon. It was red. I remember <laughs> my grandfather worked for Nikon, and I got one. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what kind of pictures I took back then. It was nothing specific, but um, I got. I used to be a huge metal freak, metalhead, and I would go to concerts and festivals and. I don't know how they found me, but a, an online magazine asked me if I was interested in going to this concert or this festival and photograph it. And they would pay for my trip and my hotel and my concert and everything. And I was like, yes, hell yeah, <laughs> I'm doing you? it. Um, probably 18, I'm going to okay, say. Gotcha. Um, and you're living in Sweden. At the yeah, time. in Sweden. So I went and bought a camera or I asked my grandfather, I said, hey, I need like a good camera, not just... I basically want to need like a good camera. So he helped me get my first one, a Nikon D300. <laughs> so it was like a professional camera, but it's not a full format camera. So for anyone who's a photographer knows what that means. Right. Uh, it's good, but it's not the best. Right. So I used it and I did really well and they liked me and I ended up working for them for years. I would just travel around. We even had our own tour bus. Whoa. And we would travel around to festivals and concerts and I would, you know, kind of, I would shoot, photograph people having fun, but I would also be like in the ditch photographing the bands playing. So that was very fun and I learned. That's kind of how I learned photography. And then I also had a very good friend of mine. He used to be a paparazzi, like an actual paparazzi. Like hiding behind the bushes. Yeah, he's from, he lives in Sweden, but he's from San Francisco. And he taught me analog photography. So I had an analog camera. I learned how to process. We were processing it in his bathroom. <laughs> I, I learned all of that, even though I've never used it. Never. But I'm so happy because ev- whether you do that or not, if you, I think if you're going to be a really good digital photographer, you need to understand like how it actually works. Do you know how a camera works? Do you know what it does? Right. Like, are you, do you, are you aware you can make your own ca- camera out of a box? Like most people don't even understand this because right. I talk to photographers all the time. Like they will ask me, oh, hey, Max, you know what? Your editing is really good. Like, do you have any tips for me? Like I just got a camera like 30, like a th- half a year ago or a year ago or something. And I see all these people. Some people just have the eye for it, mm-hmm. but they have no real clue what they're doing with the camera. They just, but I was there too. When I started, I got the camera and I started, I just learned how to do it, but I didn't know why. So I learned photography before I knew why. So right. I would change my f-stop, but I didn't actually know what it meant. Right. I just knew that if I'm photographing somebody here outside during the day, I have to do this with my settings, but I didn't know why. Right. So you didn't know I, about said, like I, I learned the camera first, then I learned why, and then I was like, oh, wow, now it all makes sense. That's <laughs> very interesting. And then how did, like, so from the concert shooting and then the analog, where'd you go there after that? Um, 
let me think. So while I was doing the the concert photography, I was doing interviews too. So I wasn't recording, but I was. I think I got kind of interested in video as well then because I, I was interviewing people on camera. Right. That was my first real thing on camera. I definitely, I have never watched my own videos and I never, never want to see them. Why not? <laughs> what? I was very young. I like to party. <laughs> I was probably not sober in any of these videos. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Um, it was better. a long Can time ago. You see right, so you were doing <laughs> interviews. While yes. you were a part um, of Let me think what I did after this. Oh, so after this, I actually got my own photo studio. So I lived in Sweden and I found a guy that had a photo studio. So we ended up sharing the studio and it was so cheap. I am not kidding when I say that I probably paid $100 a month or something. For a photo studio? Yeah, it was like in the suburbs. And it was very close to my apartment. And I didn't have room in my apartment. So I had a big, big, big photo studio. So I started doing, you know, <laughs> typical stuff. Like <laughs> product things, like kids' clothes, like anything. babies and moms, everything. Like every, everything, everything. Like anything you need right. a studio for. You know, the the... the typical stuff right. which today i would i mean no not like i would happily photograph a baby and a mom but like i wouldn't do it that way you know like i have a very meticulous way of work. unique style with my stuff Definitely. i like things to fly and splash and jump and <laughs> you know all that so i would Bye. still do all of these things but in my way mm -hmm. so but back then you know i just tried to understand and kind of learn lighting and just learn the same like i don't like artificial lights anymore i know how to do it but I'm just not fond of it. Like, I just don't like to do it. I just, because I like to be more creative. I remember I photographed a guy once only using the lights on my car. Like, I like to just figure, and natural light is always my go-to. And I rather use natural light and, like, bounce light. Mm -hmm. um, so except when I do my, my, my product photography that I'm known for, it's all artificial lights, obviously. Right. That's a different type of thing. But when it comes to people, shoot, photographing people, I like natural light. I'm very much, I like to see myself as a, like a paparazzi style. I don't like to photograph people. No, they, they should, it should look like they don't know that I'm there. That's what I'm about. I and mean, that's something like, in the video, I'm going to show your work, like some of your photos, but that's something mm -hmm. that I like about your work. Like, it wasn't until you said paparazzi style that I correlated that with your photos. Because that, that's always how I saw myself. No, I'm not a paparazzi. Cool. And the, when I'm doing model shoots, of course they know I'm there. Right. But my goal, that's why I said when people come to me and they haven't modeled before and they want to do a shoot and they're nervous and they say, I've never done this. I'm not going to do well. And I said, don't worry. Like, that is my job. I, the kind of photographer I am, like a part of my job is to make sure that you feel good and that you almost forget that we're doing a photo shoot. So I'm trying to make people do things. That's always my, my go-to thing. I want to have people do things. Like I will tell you, hey, um, just, oh, do you see that thing over there? Like can you bend and pretend your shoelace just like untied and you have to bend down and then you have to sh bend your, uh, like tie your shoe and then you have to pick up and somebody called you on the phone. Like I will have you do like an event of things and and then you get focused on that. I was like, shit, my shoelace. I went on my phone. And you're going to kind of forget that I'm there. And I feel like, and I snap a lot. So the way I capture the best shot is like, I will take like thousands of pictures. Pray and pray. Yeah, I will just like, drrr, because I know some photographers, I've modeled too for people. They will be like, okay, do that. Click. Uh, okay, do that. Click. I was like, how the hell do you know that's a good shot? There's no way in the world that was a good shot. I mean, it might be okay, but it's not going to be perfect. Right. And I aim to f get perfect. the crazy shots. Yeah. And I mean, like perfect to me is when either I caught somebody just like bursting out in a huge laugh, like actual laugh. Like some of the best pictures I take between our posing, if that makes sense. Like I shot this girl at some time. She was very uncomfortable. And, you know, I said, okay, we're going to do this thing. And like in between... So I'm there and then my makeup artist is there and it's a good friend of mine. She's also very funny. And I always like to just talk a bunch of blah, always. Wow. And like this girl starts to laugh about something and like she's really laughing, like she can't stop herself and it's probably one of the best shots. And and people also think because, you, uh, I mean, I do too, you probably do too. If you take a picture and I tell you to laugh, you're not going to want to do it because you think you look weird. Right. right and 100%. you are going to look weird if you fake it exactly yeah so that's why i'm trying because most people actually look 
really good when they do something real. What when what you don't look good in is when you fake your smile or fake your laugh. Or fake a pose or because yeah. that's all you know to like I don't like myself like I don't like myself smiling on pictures. Mm. I used to never like that. I love it now because if somebody catches me when I actually smile for real, I love that picture. Right. Because it it lo- you can tell right away if it's real or not. Hundred percent. Do you find too that like um, somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience modeling, they'll say, "Oh, I don't think I, I'm not photogenic, or I, I don't think yep. that I look attractive," oh, I and they'll shoot with you, and you'll capture those moments, and they'll be like, "Wow, that's me!" Yep. I'm like, and they just can't believe that you got that version of themselves. Oh, yeah. All the time. It's, it's amazing feeling, isn't it? That's what's that. When I started, I I didn't do this, and I think I can't say like when I realized it, but. Now I just know for sure, like I just have, I can, you can make anybody look good. You can. Yeah. There is no freaking, there are some people that are just like, you take a thousand pictures and 999 are good. Right. Yeah, there are those people, <laughs> but that's very rare. But I, I'm going to say there is no person out there that, that cannot take a good picture. Really? That is just a bad photographer. That is all, that's what 100%. it is. I agree 100%. I think that the photographer yeah, how experienced they are, how, how they yeah. work with light, how they work with the location, the environment, how they make you feel as a person while they're shooting and with you. I think, too, when I do a shoot, it's always a little bit of a warm-up time because I need to learn the p- person. If you show with somebody before, then you know. Right. But if I have a new person, I never worked with them. I need a little bit of time to figure out how they are, like how you know how they move, how they talk, how they, everything. But I would say it's not, it shouldn't take more than like half an hour or so, mm-hmm. depending on the person. To just start to to figuring them out. Right. How did you make the transition from being behind the camera to being in front of it more? Like, how, what was that transition like? I always did it before because I wanted to understand what it's like for models. Mm. So that's how I started. And I've always been into fitness. So I've always... And I mean, okay. When I was very young, obviously, I wanted to be a model. Right. Like every single girl on the planet, probably. <laughs> and uh, in Sweden, I remember I went to model agencies and they always told me I was too short. I'm 5'8". But... As a supermodel, that's too short. You have to be, what, five nine, six foot, whatever. So I remember my mom dragged me to these places, and they're like, you're too short, you're too short. I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> so, so sad. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like a tall person, you know, right. <laughs> a very tall person. Um, so I kind of give up on that. I did, like, a few photo shoots here and there just for fun. Um, and so then when I came to the States and I really started to doing all photography, because when I was in Sweden, I did photography. I had my student and everything, but I always had another like regular job as well. Mm-hmm. And when I came over here, I stopped that. I was like, I don't want to do that. I just want to do what I love and nothing else. Right. And then I started doing some modelings. I had a guy that lived in my building that was a photographer. So I started kind of assisting him a little bit. So he does only portfolios for actors and models that's all he does like he doesn't do all sorts of crazy creative shoots that is what he's known for so if you're an actor or model you need a portfolio you go to him so i started assisting him a little bit and then he did some shoots for me sometimes Uh, and that's when i started you know i've always been into fitness so Mm -hmm. obviously i wanted to to kind of get on photo my transition when i was dieting or prepping Mm -hmm. um and yeah, I, I, mean, I guess, you know, I wasn't like a g- great model at all. I wasn't comfortable in front of the camera, but I just, I wanted to still like understand because it's easy for me to talk to a model when I know what it's like. Exactly. And up until last year, I didn't really do a lot of modeling stuff. And then COVID hit <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly I had a lot more free time because I work a lot. I love what I do, but I work a lot. Like, I don't have a lot of free time. And I never had time to do, like, my own makeup and stuff. I don't know. Time and you learned time. everything. Like, I, like yeah. Everything. So I got bored. So I called my friend who's a makeup artist. She started teaching me how to do photo makeup over FaceTime. And I started practicing. I was like, ooh, this is fun. And I have I can't shoot any models. What am I going to do? I'll shoot myself. So I started doing every day, like, little shoots for myself. And for 17 years, I've done photography and graphic design and stuff. I have for so many years done content for all of these athletes right. like i did their videos i did their photos i said I, I used to work for shred supplements like i've shot all of these people and they would ask me sometimes hey max why are you not like in front of the camera i was like right. i don't like it i don't want to do it i said it's not my passion and then i said i've been running instagram accounts for people i've been creating their content i i specialize in creating content for facebook ads like i know just how to do it i just did not care to do it for me so then during covid i started doing it for myself because 
that was the yeah, only person I, yeah, yeah, right? I mean, I would still shoot products and stuff, the stuff I could do that didn't require models, but I started doing shoots for myself every day, which right now I, I don't like, now I like to find other photographers to help me because it's very complicated to, to do a photo shoot with yourself. Like you have to do your own makeup, you have to set up the light, you have to set up your camera, you have to set up a freaking screen and then, okay, uh, are you gonna do remote or are you gonna time it? I like to do remote because I like to shoot a lot, obviously, mm -hmm. and then I have to, where am I hiding the remote? Am I gonna hide my hand? Am I gonna <laughs> shoot on my phone? Like it's just so much work. Uh, I said, I can do it, but it takes so much longer. And right. since I can't see myself, so I see myself on the screen, but if I want a shot where it looks like I'm not looking on the camera, obviously I get to look away and then I can't see myself. Right. So then, you know, you just snap a lot and then, you know, it works, but it's not the best way. Right. So I've now found the photographers that I like the most of all. Mm -hmm. And then I just go back to them because they understand my style. They under Because I want the pictures I'm in to look like my style too, exactly. or most of the time, not always, but so I just have the same people I will use basically. Is that the same process that you'd recommend for like a model who wants to um, have a really dope portfolio? Like should she, should she find like a two or three photographers that she likes a lot or that he likes a lot and then just stick to those people or should they go out there and um. explore a bunch of different photographers? Because people always ask me, like, what do I recommend? I think it depends. Um, I think when you get to the point, so I said, I, I'm a brand. Right. I can't afford bad content at this right. point. Right. In the beginning, when you don't really know what to do, I would say, hell yeah, freaking explore. Yeah. And I think if you become a good model and you start getting work, then I would say it's very beneficial with different styles and different photographers because it shows that you are getting booked for a lot of things. Right. But if you are booking photographers yourself just for portfolio work, I would say don't go too wide because I said, you see yourself as a brand. Right. You follow your brand. Mm -hmm. Like you, and so I said, I've done it a couple of times. You know, people reach out on Instagram and they say, hey, I'm a photographer. I will do a shoot for free with you. And do you know what? Like I will turn 99.9% .9 down because I don't, I can't afford to waste a whole day. I got to do my makeup. I got to go there and do, do all the pictures. And what if I can't use them? I lost a whole day. Like yeah, I, you can't I afford it. no, yeah. literally I will rather pay a photographer and I get what I need than to waste my time on a free shoot. Right. I said, I understand. Hey, like, don't get me wrong. Yes. Go out and do this. If you're just starting, mm -hmm. Yes, but also keep in mind always, if you shoot with somebody that will showcase you in the wrong way, that can ruin your brand. Right. What if they shoot you and, excuse my language, but you come out looking like a hoe? What right. are you What are you going to do? And this yeah. person posts it everywhere. Right. What are you going to do? Right. Like, it looks really bad for you. Mm -hmm. So I would be very picky with selecting and not just say yes to everybody. If somebody reaches out to you and say, hey, I want to do a shoot with you for my portfolio for free, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Sure, but do your research first. Definitely. Like, look, what is how does this person shoot? Like, do they have the style that you like? Do they edit like you like? I said, I am so picky with my editing. I am I'm a bitch. Like, I will come to a photographer. I will say, I want unedited pictures. Mm -hmm. If you don't give them to me, we are not shooting. Right. And I know that kind of sucks because that as a photographer, <laughs> so as I, I have my, my favorite two photographers, their editing is good. I let them edit my pictures. But if it's anybody else outside of that, I, I won't. If you want to shoot with me, I am editing, like, period. Right. I think it's dope. That's and I said, if you don't like that, I fully respect it. And then right. you say, no, I, I'm not talking about you. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about uh, somebody. <laughs> JP is great. <laughs> um, I said, if a photographer doesn't respect that, I fully respect that because I, I don't like when people edit my pictures either. And the thing is, if I would do a photo shoot with you and you do edit it, please write it like please be clear with people that i didn't do that because right. some people would put a filter on it or whatever and then they that's, post that's, it that's and i was issue. like you have to write that i didn't edit that right. that will it looks really bad for my right. business because uh, that everything matters you can be a great photographer <laughs> and a really shitty retoucher and then the photo is gonna end up looking like, like shit like, shit, exactly. like it all has to do if you don't know how to edit then learn that right. you c or you hire somebody that right. is good right. but you can't take pictures and then deliver shit Exactly. Because you don't know how to edit. It's your brand at the end of the day. Yes. Now, as a photographer, okay, so now you told me, like, as as a model, right? On the photographer end, let's say he's he or she is starting off in the beginning of their career. Mm -hmm. Should you 
should they go and experiment different styles and different kinds of models and different locations or should they pick a niche and then really hone in on that like what do you recommend for a photographer who's i mean it's the same maybe you don't know what your niche is i think you should find your your niche Mm -hmm. yes but what if you don't know what that is you obviously have to play around and explore right so I said, I, if you would have asked me when I started, I would have held on know that I would be splashing foods <laughs> in my kitchen. Right. Like I would have never <laughs> known that's what I was going to do. And that's the thing I love the most. Like <laughs> I said, I hate to cook. <laughs> I really hate to be in kitchens. And I hate to cook. And then the absolute favorite thing I do is like, it's like food, food photography. Food photography. <laughs> so if, if you had to pick, so if you had to pick one kind of photography for you to do your entire life, what would it be? Food? The product stuff. The product. I mean, no, as, I mean, you know, my stuff, like yeah. it's not, food photography like that it's like um, a lot of products and i'm like showcasing the the products flavor and theme yeah. kind of yeah How'd that's the thing i love uh so i started working with shred supplements you know funny about that uh-huh i met you before you met me i think because i met you, <laughs> you yeah. met me before i met you yeah <laughs> I, I mean, I know Jersey. we talked about this. Yeah, I met you in I don't Jersey. remember don't that. Remember. I do remember we met in Miami <laughs> on the photo shoot. We met in Jersey yeah. at the headquarters. I don't remember that. Yeah. Just it was a re- long time ago. A very long time ago. Right. <laughs> well, I didn't shoot this kind of stuff for them. So I started working for them as a graphic designer. And I told them that, hey, I want to do photography. But they already had two photographers. So they didn't need another one. And, you know, when I want something, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to be a photographer. I don't care what they say. So I went on my... I I was my day off from work and they had like an event. So I went to the event on my day off, photographed everything, edited it and sent it over to them. And literally the exact comment I got was, wow, you are the best photographer we have. (laughs) (laughs) So then they made me the photo manager. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I started doing that. And then in the end, before I left, I was creative director. So I was doing like the photography and the other stuff. So I do... I do graphic design, I do web design, I do animation stuff, I do, do uh, everything. All, everything. But I don't I don't promote everything because I don't want to go out and say, hey, I do everything. So I, I do promote my product photography. That is the number one thing I will always do first. But if a client comes to me and, and I do this work for them and they say, hey, do you know somebody that can make a graphic? Yeah, I'm right here, you know? So I do it more like that. Um but I can still do it. Like for my own brands, I do everything. My graphics, my emails, my website, everything. Um, I'm just, I like to be able to know, even if I end up hiring somebody to do something for me, I want to know how it works. Like I used to do my own taxes. I used to be an accountant for my dad's firm in Sweden. I know how to do I don't want to do it. I have an accountant, right. but at least I know how it works. I just want to know how it works. Mm-hmm. Because if you have no clue, people are going to fuck you. so have a little bit of knowledge and everything i think even if you don't end up doing it um no so for shreds i was photo first i was photographing like products and models and then i started doing recipes and like food so i was shooting like so they ended up they got a studio it was like me alone me and my dog alone in the studio all day long i had like the best life ever (laughs) just like listening to music playing with my dog like shooting stuff Mm -hmm. all day and i remember when i first started i had like no limits on my budget (laughs) can you imagine the content back then i remember the content back then i remember the events that they were throwing like yeah we wanted uh, fireworks over here no uh, but for me too for buying foods and stuff (laughs) it sounds when i sound like a horrible person buying all this food (laughs) Uh, (laughs) people hate on me sometimes but here's the thing anything you see in the world that is a picture that has food in it. It's food that went in the garbage. Right. Like, I'm not... the But here's the thing. And then people will be, oh, yeah, you're wasting food. But you know what? If we didn't waste food, then you would never buy the product. That, you know, so buy. every single person out there is a part of being the bad guys. Because <laughs> you look at that shit, you like what you see, you go and buy it. Mm-hmm. That's freaking... That's how you market things. Right. And I really try... It's kind of gross sometimes. A lot of things in my kitchen you can't eat because I try to reuse as much as I can. I, I will that. literally clean up and like save all the chocolate chips and shit I splashed around. No, I, I will reuse it until I can't reuse it anymore for as long as I possibly can. Yeah, um, I remember going to your house and you're like, no, nah, don't touch that. Yeah. Don't touch that one. I'm like, Max, yes. what can I eat here that won't kill me, please? <laughs> no, nah, don't oh, touch that. Oh, my ex <laughs> a few times definitely eaten things he should have not eaten. I was like, you ate that? <laughs> like, Bender from us. like, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, so I shot like recipes for them. Mm -hmm. So then when I left, th that's how I kind of, I was like, oh, I like doing this. Cause it's like, I don't really, I'm not like a good, I'm not good at cooking. I can cook, but I'm not like really good at it, right. but I'm really good at making it look good in pictures. That's what I mean. Like everything isn't edible in pictures either. Right. It's just, it just has it's to like an art to like a yeah. knack. Like there's yeah. tricks that you learn about it. Oh like yeah. I saw a video and I don't do I don't do product photography at all. Mm -hmm. But I saw a video on product photography just because just because. Mm -hmm. And um so it's a, it's a stack of pancakes, right? And instead mm -hmm. of putting maple syrup, they put um, motor oil. Because it looks just like maple syrup, but it Ooh, looks fluffy and thicker. That. And but I was one like, thing what? I do is that anytime I want to have like something pouring mm -hmm. or milk or I never use milk. It's all heavy cream. Get out of here. Because it looks so, if you pour milk, it gets like bubbly and it looks thin. Mm -hmm. But if you use heavy cream, it looks like white and thick and like, it still looks like milk in the pictures. Right. So that's like one thing I do. Or um, uh, somebody asked me a while ago, doing something with splashing. Or my one go-to, if I buy milk, coconut milk. It's the whitest thing you can find. Really? Because all other milk has like a little bit of a off-white color to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's like things like that. I don't want to do that. If I do a smoothie, because then I want I want to have time to to pick to photograph when it's like dripping and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you make a smoothie, it takes like one second and the whole thing just drips everywhere. Right. So it has to go slow. Right. One time I made a smoothie that literally dripped and stopped there. Like it's so thick and gross, and I would just put random powders and stuff in there just to, to make like it make it the consistency i want so you no, do not drink those don't drink <laughs> don't eat don't even look at it too long yeah but you can like spray stuff to look nicer and how did you learn just trial and error just trying new things and i don't really know that that i'm sure there are like specific tricks that typically food photographers use but i have no idea i never look at i try i never really look at other people like that yeah. Would you ever come up? I, I wanted to ask you this a long time ago. Would you ever come up with like a book or like a course on how to do what you do? Yeah, I could totally sure. see you doing amazing at that, like food photography and. I actually started. So I have an OnlyFans, uh -huh. which is nothing sexual, <laughs> no nudes. Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. Either way, when I started, no, it's a competition prep. Right now, it's all competition prep. That's all it is. Literally, I will post what I eat, exactly what right. I eat, and everything. Because uh, I don't point. post. I don't. Yes, <laughs> no pictures, just <laughs> the writing. Uh, I will write what I do for my prep. Right. Like it's just like very detailed information about what I do for my prep. While on my regular Instagram, I just post like, okay, now we cut some carbs. Like I won't go into detail like that. And but when I started it in the beginning, it was meant to be behind the scenes and photo shoots. Mm -hmm. So I started posting, you know how I did a selfie photo shoot, what screen I'm using, how to do a budget version of it if you can't afford to buy the equipment, blah, blah, blah. It will be stuff like that. But then, you know how it is. People just like, oh, she has an OnlyFans. Oh, they're nudes. Right. So obviously I have mostly guys signing up there. Even though it literally says, when you count my only, <laughs> it says only competition prep. Right. Like that's what it says. And if you are dumb enough to sign up and ask for nudes, like. Do people still do that? Yeah, like 100%. hey, I love the recipes, but like, can I? No, see, actually, I'm gonna say though. Feet? So I've I've been posting like over and over now, saying that hey, this is what I post. Don't expect anything else. And right. I'm trying to be so clear because right. I don't want people to sign up being confused. Right. And but here's the thing: if people don't read or they can't read, like, what am I gonna do? So a lot of people actually do sign up and they say thank you. Like, I really like this content. I really appreciate you. You're, this is super cool. Most of the people write that. But every now and then I will get somebody that will be like, hey, where are the nudes? Where and the I would just like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Why not do like a Patreon? I feel like Patreon is more, people are, don't the expect what? Patreon instead of OnlyFans. I don't know what that is. It's like another like. Well, OnlyFans wasn't intended for this. Go to ac go to actual OnlyFans like page mm -hmm. and see what it is they promote musicians and fucking personal trainers get out of here there is nothing sexual that was not why they started the page but th it doesn't matter what page or what somebody does it's always going to turn into that that's why the same people that follow me on instagram they know exactly what i'm about right and they are very appreciative of what the type of content i do and the information i post and everything and the people that write the dumb comments like i have very little stupid comments now compared to what it was in the beginning and the few people that write something stupid it's always the people that just randomly scroll through they see one picture and they assume right away oh 
she's selling sex or something right. Right. just because i posted a, like a competition picture in a bikini like right. just because i'm wearing a bikini doesn't mean i sell sex like right. come on people 100 <laughs> well, percent. i mean you've you've evolved with social media i mean you were there from the very beginning with strides and everything um are you tired at all like have you felt burnt yeah. out from using social oh, media have you felt burnt out no but i sometimes wish i could just delete my account i'm like, not i feel the same way I think it's such a great marketing tool, mm -hmm. but that's what it is. It's a marketing tool. Right. And I try to be, because I love helping people and I love when people send me questions about things. Like, for example, I have a lot of women contacting me about the fact that I don't have breast implants. Like, mm -hmm. I love stuff like that. I love to talk. And they're like, oh, is it possible to compete? I would love to compete. I thought I couldn't do it. Or the tattoos. It's not normal to be a competitor with so many tattoos. Right. And people will be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I love this, da, da, da. Or, uh, like, all these things, like... I'm trying to like push for the things that I'm struggling with. I have a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't supposed to train. I wasn't supposed to bodybuild. And I do. Like I love to help other people. People come to me, I have bad scoliosis. Yeah, I do too. But I'm training. Hey. And I had this one girl, like she came to me, she said, I have really bad scoliosis. Doctors say I shouldn't train, blah, blah, blah. Now, fast forward like six months later, this freaking bitch deadlift more than I do now. Hey. Like, way to go well, you know to you, yeah. i love that or when people write hey I get, i'm so inspired like i actually renewed my gym membership i was about to cancel it and then i read your post and i you know that's what i love and then you always have those freaking people i here's it i don't know if women do this too but i highly doubt it like the men that will go and they will send like hey i want to smash you so hard here and then they send like a dick pic and i was like what the fuck are you thinking right. i don't even want to have that shit from like my boyfriend right. <laughs> i don't know like who thinks that works does that actually work for somebody i doubt it I they, doubt they can't it. Yeah. and i don't care who they are it doesn't matter that yeah. is just freaking disturbing of course <laughs> 100%. Like, do you get stuff like that too from women? No, I mean, uh, the girls I who mean, have or, girls who have already had something with, like, those but that's different though. Yeah, those are prizes. That is like, very oh, different. If you already oh, know wow. somebody, but when you don't know somebody, yeah, yeah, no, I've never. Uh, I, I I don't know. And the, it happens all the time for you. Right? I saw this hilarious freaking post <laughs> someday, and it said that guys have to stop sending dick pics because there are so many dick pics around that it's not exciting anymore. They have to. Cr we have to create a demand for dick. Yeah, we need to create a scarcity <laughs> for dick pics. Guys, I was like, yes, it's economy yes. one one. Stop sending dick pics, so we <laughs> want them again. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. We're talking about dick pics in a creative podcast. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yep. thank, thank you, photography. It's well, all photography. Here's the thing. I can only <laughs> speak for that. I have not got any pictures of women's vaginas. <laughs> I mean, I do get flirty messages from women sometimes, but never like that. No. Like That's why I said I, I don't know if women do this too. I'm sure s there are some, but I feel like it's less. Yeah, way less. Much less. Much, much yeah, less. Yeah, I don't know. Question. What so I said, I'm not on Instagram to find a boyfriend. Right. I am not now. And the thing is, if if you actually want my attention, and you send that, I'm, I'm going to block you. Like, like I, I want nothing yeah, to do with you. I don't sense. care if you could have been my future husband. I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, you are out. Yeah. <laughs> if you actually want my attention, come with an interesting business proposal, and maybe we'll actually <laughs> talk. <laughs> I love that. No, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer the front end of the camera or the back end? Like with Back end, always. Always? Yeah. Well, You're so good at I being... Always, well, I can do both, but I think I like it now, though, when I found people that actually like to work with me and they are willing to let me be a part of the creative. Right. Like, I have one of my favorite photographers. He, so I compete in WBFF and he's one of the photographers for WBFF. So mm -hmm. first time I met him, he actually reached out to me last year before I competed. I'd never met him. And he said, hey, you know, this is me. I would love to do like a... Oh, no, no, actually, no. It was my coach who said, oh, this guy who's the photographer, he's actually doing like... He wants to do a couple of like free shoots with a few girls and, you know, talk to him. So I talked to him. He's like, yes, I've been loving, love to shoot you. I meet this guy and we're like the same. <laughs> you know, we, I, we're very like clicked right away. And he has a very interesting style. Not at all my style, mm -hmm. but I love the fact that he has such a unique thing. Like he shoots so different mm -hmm. from anybody else I've seen. And it, it would it would never be my style. But then I love that he's like, hey, I want to do something. What do you want to do? Let's talk about it. Right. Like he wants to bounce the ideas with me. I love that. Because if I have to shoot something and 
the photographer is like, I want to shoot it. Like, I get this. Hey, I want to shoot you in a bikini on a beach. <laughs> I say, nope, thanks. We're not, not going to happen. I was like, or if you would come to me and say, hey, can I shoot you like pouring milk in your hair? I was like, that sounds gross. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, like, no, I don't not know. Milk, heavy cream, heavy cream. Heavy cream heavy in cream. my hair. No, but that's just a stupid example. But yeah. like, I'm not going to do... Uh, no, and th- so a person asked me, why do you not have a single picture of yourself in a bikini on a beach? I'm never going to do it. Like, I'm never going to yeah. do it. That is the most boring thing I can think of. Right. 100%. <laughs> like, it's, if it's you are brand. a creative, if you are a creative, be creative. Right. Don't shoot what everybody else shoots. Right. Take inspiration, but don't copy. Right. Never copy anybody. Ever. It happens all the time too. Like I look up pages, I'm like, oh, that's no, it isn't that guy. No, I, I was yeah. here saying, take inspiration, but never copy anybody. Right. That how are you gonna make a name for yourself by copying somebody? Right. Do you know how many pe- people are trying to copy my food thing now? All the time, I see it. All I see the it time. all the time. You can all see right time. away, it's not me though. But I, but you know when it's you. Like I'll oh, see yeah, like yeah, an yeah. Adam, like oh that's Max. Yeah. Max. Because they have no clue how I do it. Exactly. They think that oh she does this, and I look at them, I was like. Oh my God, it's so bad. And I can see how they, they probably, so I spent f- five hours on one my pa- one picture and they spent like 20 minutes and you, you can, can you tell. You can tell automatically. <laughs> you can just you see it, tell. you can see their mistakes. Like every single splash, every single mess, every single thing is planned out for. I don't, nothing, like it's organized disaster. How do you visualize pictures. it beforehand? Like, let's say you want to do a picture of my key. Like, how do you visualize? I don't, I mean, I always get like, I can just, so usually people have like a product and they're right. like, Max, here's my product. I see it. And right away I'm like, ding, I have an idea. That doesn't mean that's exactly how it's going to come out. I just have an idea. But when, when I start to set up, I come up with new ideas while I do it. Mm-hmm. Kind of. That's you know, always how it is. But I don't know. I just I just see in images too. So I had a friend now. She there's uh, a good friend of mine. She designs labels for people, and usually she designs it, and then they send it to me for photography. And she has started now kind of sending me the labels before they even make the product to ask my opinion on the label before we even get to the printed really? thing. So she sends it to me because I, I do design too. But like, and I can design labels. But like, why am I gonna sit and do that when she? That's what she does, and she's the best at it. And I, she knows how to do photography. But why is she gonna do? It? Like, she would do the label. She's the best at it. I would do the pictures. I am the best at that. Right. So, and then she would send me the picture, and I would look at the label, and right away I would see like, oh, put that there, and put that there, and put that there. She's like, shit, I didn't even think about it. Be- I don't know. We just, and then. I don't know when you're just work with visuals like that, you just see images. Like I don't know how to say it. Like I can look at the plant over there and I will see something that I could do with it to make it look better in a picture. I don't know. Yeah, just, I can't. It, it I can't say you. how. It just like it just like that in my mind. You've been doing it for so long too, so it's like yeah. it's second like nature to you now. And like, can it be for any product? Can you have like a leather jacket and be like, all right? Yeah. I, I mean, sh- I mean, if I shot a leather jacket, I mean, it would. Be, <laughs> I do a lot of. Uh, a peer of photography. So one thing that I've known for too is like my flat lay clothes, mm-hmm. like when I make outfits kind mm-hmm. of. It's, so it's no model. It's just I lay on the ground and then I would pair it with like stuff. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of that. But then obviously when it comes to apparel, it's easier to use a model. Right. It always is. Um. So yeah, I mean, y- yes. Actually, I've not, I feel, why can't somebody come to me and want me to shoot a leather jacket with a bunch of splashing food around? That would be so cool. <laughs> uh, if you can send me your rights, please. You can shoot my leather jacket with yeah. a bunch of flashes. <laughs> that would be so fun. I need yeah, to do that. Well, let's do it. I love this. Because I would, I would like, lo- I get a lot of supplements because mm-hmm. that's, you know, I shoot it and then they tell their friends and then they tell their friends. I've never spent a dollar on marketing my photography ever. Oh. Not one dollar. And then I spent my whole freaking income on <laughs> marketing my coaching program. <laughs> it <happens>. <laughs> it's funny, right? It I was like, I've done photography for 17 years and I've never paid for a promo ever yeah, i mean it's just, it just shows how good you are but that's what i would like to reach it's just like i need one brand to believe in me like i actually reached out to a tequila company mm-hmm. and they were interested but i haven't done it yet so i want to do the same style i do for supplements but for anything like a lipstick or a, a tequila bottle or a i don't know anything a hammer I mean, it could be anything <laughs> yeah. but i just need since i haven't actually shot that specific thing it's harder to reach those brands because all they do always, they go to an agency. Like I reached out to Whole Foods Mm -hmm. and they said, we love your work, but then they go to their agency and the agency just puts somebody there for them. 
like even my friend she Whole Foods actually ended up using some of my pictures I took for a brand that I now carry in their store. So they still have my stuff there. But I want them to hire me, you know? Like, just fucking take a shot. <laughs> but I say it's hard because everybody works with agencies. And I do not want to be with an agency. Why? Because here's the thing. If you work for an agency, who the hell is going to know you are the one shooting? Agency is going to take all the credit. Every time. Always. Every single time. <laughs> So, I mean, why don't you, I mean, you're, you're I yourself. I have my own agency. Exactly. <laughs> you're yourself on agency. Yeah. But I just said to reach like new brands, you just have to find one person that is willing to believe in you. Because they, it's very difficult for people that are not photographers or something. It's very hard for them to visualize what you can do with their product right. without seeing it. Right. They can see this picture. They think it looks incredible. But this their product is here and they can't think what that could look like. Right. So, how do you guide a client into that? Like into your head for a little bit? Like how can you walk them towards their, your vision or do you just do i mean it? the best thing to do is to just actually do it but it right. takes a lot of time and my goal before was to try to do one shoot every month for free for somebody mm -hmm. that was a completely like a brand that was completely outside of my line of work but i'll be honest i have not had time i did one for ciroc vodka I remember and they that. loved it yeah. Uh, and that's why I'm talking to the tequila brand now. But I, I ha said I have not fucking had time. And now when I'm competing in six weeks, like forget it. After I compete, you know, I want to try to think about that again. After you compete and take over the world, yes. Take over. That's amazing. Well, when I'm the world champion, maybe more people because that's how people find me for photography too. They yeah. find my personal Instagram and they will like message me, "Hi, do you model?" I was like, "I'm a photographer. Here's my page." <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh wow you're a photographer I was like yeah every single picture you see on my own instagram yeah. i didn't take every single one of them i take a lot of them but i like coordinate and edit and everything like all the content on my page is stuff that are my ideas right and i said it sucks as the, the photographers i don't really let a lot of photographers do their thing unless i see that they have something unique right. going on and right. right. that i would happily do and I say I happily promote other photographers. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody I really like, I will, I will post all the time that I have these two photographers that I use a lot, and we need to shoot soon. Yes, by the do. way, we haven't done you so. Do. Otherwise, I would promote well, we you. Like, I mean, but I, I will promote them all the time. These two photographers. I say these are my two absolute favorite photographers in the fucking world. <laughs> They're freaking great. Go book them. Yes, I do when it. We shot, you know? that, we shot that workout library, and I remember you posted like a funny mm. like section mm. of it, and, I, and yeah, I just I love that. funny memories. All right, so we have like five minutes left. Okay. All right. Wanna I want to hear, where do you see yourself with your, your career? Like with being a creative, with being a model, where do you see yourself going like in the future? What well, do do? right now, I only have one goal in my head, and that is to win the WBF World Crown. World Crown, baby. So I said, yes, I have a lot of like future goals, but I was like, I'm so focused on just that right now. Right know how you need to uh manifest exactly positive things. energy so i've already visualized the scenario when i get the crown on my head <laughs> what i'm gonna say after <laughs> i booked my photo shoot for the day after <laughs> <laughs> what I'm gonna hey shoot. i already won the competition you take photos yes <laughs> yeah, i love it um and then i mean i want to grow my coaching business so it's going well but I have put in, a, I've invested a lot on trying. Because it's re the, the hard part today is it used to be easier on Instagram to reach people. But you know how it works today. Like if you don't pay, you're, they're not going to let you reach people. Exactly. So I spent a lot of money on trying to just get my name out there. Because a lot of people don't, I said, some people might have heard of me or something. But I need to show that, hey, I'm a coach. Hey, I'm a photographer. I'm Hey, I'm this. So I just like get my name out there. Right. That's like my focus right now. And obviously I want all the businesses to bloom. So Rock, where are you? Yeah, no, I want to book a like number one goal. I don't know what brand, but I want to book like a huge brand. I don't know, like Coca-Cola or Nike or something Coke, like that. Coke, you hear that? Yes. Give her a chance, guys. Nike. What's like the biggest brand out there? Uh, what would you say? The most Apple. famous Apple. Apple. Can I splash in a cup? Oh, that would be sick. That could be cool. sick. I didn't say nothing. No, I'm just kidding. That could be sick. Apple, Nike, Adidas. <laughs> On a phone. Yeah. <gasps> hey, you hearing I this? I almost, one? okay. That is a project that I might have to just get done. You should and do send. It. But who do I send it to? That's also the problem. Like, if you do it, who do you send it to? 
so you actually get seen. It's like, not like I can post it on Instagram, they're not gonna see it. No, but you can find them through LinkedIn, like find like the marketing department through LinkedIn and then email right. them. Yeah. Because I always ask, uh, so, oh, do you know what I want to do right now? What do you want to do right now? I want to get booked by Philip Plain. Please, Philip Plain, book me. I reached out to them, but I am trying to, through my friends now, figuring out who I can reach directly instead of trying to just reach them yeah. generally. LinkedIn is huge. I that. want them to fucking work with me. I want to model and shoot and everything. But their sh shoes are the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, LinkedIn is the best way. That's how you reach the most people, like in corporate. Like the yeah. High up and, yeah right. Maybe I should do that. I am on yeah. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is huge. I try to update it frequently. Are you going to make YouTube videos at all? I do. I have a YouTube channel. <gasps> Good I value. haven't posted a lot, so I posted. I post a lot of like vlogs. Okay. Yeah. And right now, I'm actually this whole competition prep. I'm doing a vlog for my sponsor, AP Sports Regimen. So they're gonna post it on their YouTube, and I'm gonna post it on my YouTube. So it will be like showing not just the how I prep for the show, but also like how what I do. You know, the photo shoots I do during the day or the work I do during the day. So people see like I'm. Tr I do all of these other things as well while I'm on the prep kind of and like how i manage to eat when i travel or how i like i i will buy an air fryer on the home put in the hotel <laughs> you do what you gotta do what's you know? the name of your youtube page uh i think it's called max bustamante now Max bustamante. so i'm using max west everywhere bustamante is my ex name uh but i, I feel like somebody took the, the name on youtube or something <laughs> the best way to find you is so just Max West on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, just search Max West, two A's, two X's, everywhere. Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. everything. Are you, are you still big on TikTok? Are you still doing those? Uh, I'm on TikTok. I, I don't post this much. I post a little bit. I'm just trying to, because on TikTok, I try to be just humor. Right. Like oh, funny I remember stuff. you're posting I all the time on TikTok. Stuff. I want to be like a comedian. <laughs> but I said, it's. You can't do everything all the right. time. I can't just... I, it takes a lot of time to do TikTok videos. It really does. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to focus on the fitness right now. Right. So I said I do post there though. Just not as much as I did before. And also they're limiting their reach now. Just, you know, when you started, you could reach... I got like almost a million hits on like a video. Mm -hmm. You can't get that now. They're, it's turning into Instagram. You know, you should, you're should. you supposed to pay. That's how it works. Yeah, For anybody who sits on Instagram and doesn't realize like what this platform actually is... It's trying to be like Amazon. You need to understand. It's a marketing yeah, platform. Like that's Amazon what it is. You pay money for people to see you. Right. That's just that's just what it is. So if for people that also come, so I have I don't or so that I don't pay anything on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't run any Instagram ads at all. I run Facebook ads. That is all I do. Um I don't know or think it's worth to do the Instagram promos, at least not if you want to sell something. If you just want to have followers, yeah, freaking go for it. Uh, but here's the thing. Followers and likes are not going to pay your bills. Exactly. Like, I don't care. Here's the exactly. thing. I much rather have quality likes and comments on my posts than just a bunch of likes. Because people always like, oh, you just want to have a bunch of likes. No, I don't. Because you know what? They're not going to do nothing for at me. At all. Nothing. No. They don't do nothing. nothing. I'd rather have 100 likes on a picture and it was like a hundred people that genuinely wanted to hire me. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's money. That pays your bills. That lives your livelihood. Everything. I am not on Instagram to make friends. I'm not on Instagram to find a boyfriend. I am not on Instagram to hook up with somebody. No dick pics. Just no. Forget it. <laughs> like I like to help people. Everything isn't about money either. Right. Like if somebody has good questions, like I need to lose weight or I want to compete or I want to do that, da, 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 whatever. I have an injury. Like, I will answer your questions. But sometimes I don't even see those questions because of all the, all the dick garbage. Dicks, all the dick yes. <laughs> that are coming in. Like, stop yeah. sending them so I can see the people that actually want help. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> Max West, two A's, two X's. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Cheers. Cheers. And we got to do this again. And we got to shoot. And we got to do a yeah. bunch of things. And yes. Yes. Let's shoot in this month. Please, let's do it. Before I go to Vegas. Before Vegas. Before I disappear and look like a toothpick with skin. Can't wait to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.